Hi there folks and welcome to another episode in the Geology 101 Physical Geology video series. This video series is modeled after my college courses here. Same curriculum, same topics. Uh, we don't include the lab experiences or the field trip experiences, but you can supplement a lot of that material with some of my other videos here, so feel free to explore. As always, thank you for your time and your support of the channel. Much appreciated. I am geology professor Sean Wilsey, and today in episode 22, we're going to look at the geologic time scale, basically this calendar of Earth's history that helps us understand and basically give context to lots of events that have occurred over the Earth's history. So thanks again for joining me. Uh, let's get right to it. This is actually the last, I guess, video in this section we've talked about with geologic time concepts. We've looked at relative dating, absolute dating, fossils. Now we're gonna finish off that little section and look at concepts of geologic time by looking at the time scale that we use as geologists. So fairly important, if you wanna become proficient in geology, this is a good thing to commit to memory. It is ultimately rote memorization, but like a lot of things we learn, it's not that hard once you spend a little bit of time with it and wrap your head around it. If you're a student in my Geology 101 class, you need to actually memorize this because it's on an exam. And even if you're just a more casual learner, um, this is a really good thing to learn if you're going to become more proficient in geology. So basically, again, it's a calendar versus history. It's convenience. It's our way of referring to different periods of time instead of just always referring to them using a numeric value, like 362 million years ago. Instead of using that, we might just say the Devonian period. And once you know you and whoever you're having a conversation with are comfortable with that time period, it's a much easier way to use, or much easier term to use as we're kind of getting around Earth's history and referring to different rocks or different events or fossils during that period of time. Uh, similarly, we employ this already in you know, just human the human experience with other lengths of time. We take a calendar year, one trip around the sun, and we divide it up into months, January, February, March, April, May. Um, we refer to our birthdays this way. So for example, if my birthday was um, March 24th, uh, everyone knows when that is. We all have a context for when that occurs on the calendar. If I tell you my birthday is on the 83rd day of the year, that's a little trickier, right? You get, oh, 83rd day of the year. I'm gonna have to figure out exactly when that in is so I don't miss your birthday. So based on convenience, just like days of the week, uh, months of the year, the geologic time scale is another just convenient tool to referring to Earth's history. So we established this time scale has been established over many decades if not centuries using all the principles and tools we've talked about thus far later specific dates were added to this using radioactive decay but those early geologists recognized in studying especially sedimentary rock layers that you know certain rock layers in their area had certain rock types and as they went up or down that stratigraphic sequence they saw other rock types and other geologic events they saw different fossils showing up so that to them organizing all that chaos stratigraphically uh, made sense by sort of dividing out the rock layers into chunks and of course that is corresponding to time periods as well. So we divide it, at least at my Geology 101 level, we're going to divide it into eons, eras, and periods. We're not going to go to the uh, level of epochs. This is a sort of level that we employ, or I employ at the Geology 102 level, um, but we're going to stick with these first three as we just kind of learn this together. So here's my little diagram we're going to start with. So eons, eras, periods, the geologic time scale. Uh, there's even some fun videos if you get on YouTube. There's fun little songs where you can learn this. So if you really want to commit this to memory, figure out what works best for you. Could be a little flashcard, a visualization. It might be reciting this every day before you go to bed. It might be looking for one of these fun, catchy songs where they've turned the geologic time scale into a song. If you think about all the lyrics that we've learned, um, you know, if you like music, you probably know the lyrics to hundreds, maybe thousands of songs. There's lots of things we memorize quite easily. Think of all the animals you can identify as a kid. You could go to the zoo and point to the giraffe and the zebra and the monkey. Um, so the geologic time scale, although it's going to seem maybe a little bit tricky with some new terms, if you're not familiar with it, uh, it is something you can learn 
and you can remember uh, just takes a little bit of effort so let's start with the first division in our geologic time scale so our first division the line in the sand that geologists drew many years ago and I, I've kind of rounded off these numbers over here so I, I will put the numbers over here in millions of years ago uh, these could be quibbled with and if you look at some official geologic time scale maybe it's 542 rather than 540 million years. I've kind of rounded these off to keep the numbers simple for my students. Uh, so our first line in the sand at an eon level is between the Phanerozoic and the Precambrian. Now Phanerozoic is a word you might, might remember part of this because when we talked about igneous rocks and igneous rock textures, we recognize this prefix, fan, fan or fanner. And remember we had phaneritic textures and a phaneritic texture in an igneous rock is an igneous rock that has large or visible crystals. So this literally translates to visible. The last part of this word zoic or zoology, you might recognize that associated with life. So this literally translates to visible life. So this is approximately the time or this line in the sand here is drawn where we see rocks that contain visible obvious fossils and rocks that you know, originally we didn't think had fossils in them, but we've come to realize that there are fossils in some of these late Precambrian rocks. They tend to be quite primitive for the most part, maybe soft-bodied organisms um, or more simple things like algae or bacteria. But for the most part, that's where the line in the sand is drawn, the 540 million years of the Phanerozoic. And then this period of time of the Precambrian, even though on my graph here, the green box looks a lot larger than the orange. Look at the numbers here. This is actually 4 billion years of Earth's history. This is 88% of Earth, Earth's history is in the Precambrian. And we actually don't know as much about the Precambrian as we do about these later time periods because we have mostly um, igneous and metamorphic rocks. Remember the rock cycle, rocks get melted, rocks get metamorphosed, they get changed, they get buried. And we have much more information about this more recent time period, the Phanerozoic. So this is going to be the eon that we're going to subdivide into eras and periods. Now, in my 102 class, we do divide the Precambrian out into three chunks of time, but I don't do this at the 101 level. So those of you who are going to clamor into the comment section and say, what about the Archean and the Proterozoic and the Hadean and... I understand that those exist. Remember, this is a Geology 101 lecture. It's a Geology 101 course. And this is what I teach. This is my method of teaching. Um, if you throw all the time periods at students at this level, it overwhelms them. So I find that it's better to just start baby steps with just sort of the, the more common um, geologic time periods and then move from there. So there's our first division at the eon level, Phanerozoic and the Precambrian. Let's move on to the era level. So we have three eras in the Phanerozoic, the Cenozoic, the Mesozoic, and the Paleozoic. These divisions between these three time periods are based on mass extinctions, the two biggest extinction events that have occurred in Earth's history. Now this one here, between the Cenozoic and the Mesozoic, many of you know about this one. This is the one that killed off, among other things, the dinosaurs. And then we have an even bigger extinction event at the end of the Paleozoic. So these are drawn largely from the fossil record and what we see going on with life on planet Earth. So we can see that there's an extinction event here and one here. And the numbers here, about 90% of all species go extinct here, about 70% here. So these are big blows that are dealt to life and organisms on planet Earth. Uh, Paleozoic, again, we're using the same suffix here, zoic meaning life, so ancient life, middle life, and recent life. That's how these sort of um, break down in terms of just the, the word and their origins. So those are our three big chunks of time, the, um, the, the eras. You can see the time divisions here. The Cenozoic goes from about 65 million years ago to today. Mesozoic from about 250 million years ago to 65. And then the Paleozoic from about 540 to 250. Okay, so there's the eras. And then we'll finally end our geologic time scale discussion here by looking at the periods. And this is probably the trickiest part. Up to this point, we've just looked at five names. You might know some of these, but then this is the part where, where students really start to cringe and um, you know get a little bit nervous about the whole thing. But it's not too bad when you break it down. So we have three periods in the Cenozoic, three in the Mesozoic, and seven in the Paleozoic. Um, most people feel pretty comfortable with these Mesozoic ones. Those people who are big fans of dinosaurs have heard of the Cretaceous, the Jurassic, and the Triassic. 
Then we get down to the Paleozoic, and we have the Permian, the Pennsylvanian, the Mississippian, the Devonian, the Silurian, the Ordovician, and the Cambrian. So everything before the Cambrian then would be the Precambrian. Now, um, before we offend our UK and European geology friends, uh, the Pennsylvania and the Mississippian is the division we use here in the US, in America, and I believe in most of North America as well. In the parts of the UK or in Europe, they lump these two together and it's called the Carboniferous. But over here in America, we have some distinct differences uh, in these rocks, and so they've been divided out into these time periods. The Mississippian in North America is a time period where there's a lot of limestone, a lot of carbonate rocks, higher sea levels, and these rocks here tend to be quite a bit different in terms of rock type and in fossils from the Pennsylvanian, which tends to be dominated mostly, but not exclusively, by terrestrial deposits, a lot of coal deposits. So you have to remember that a lot of these terms came from the place the location where those early geologists were studying that time period. So a lot of these come from places in Europe. Um, Devon is an area, or Devonshire, I believe, is an area in the UK. These three bottom ones here, I believe, are Celtic names from the area in Wales. Um, and so you can see some of the differences here. This is like the Jura Mountains of Switzerland. You can get on the internet and look at all the origin of these names as you're interested. Or I'm sure someone will leave in the comments some of the fun facts that go with all these names. If we come up here to the Cenozoic, these aren't really places. These are a little different. This is the Quaternary, the Neogene, and the Paleogene. These, these two here used to be called the Tertiary. So if you you're as old as I am, or even older maybe, you might remember the good old days where we just had two periods in the Cenozoic, but recently, recently meaning in the last 20 years or so, these have been subdivided into the Neogene and the Paleogene. Every so often there's an international panel of stratigraphy, I think it's called something like that, and folks will get together, uh, prominent geologists who uh, will d debate these things, and sometimes they'll move the time frame a little bit better Better dating has revealed that the Triassic starts at maybe not 248 million years ago, maybe it's 247.5, and, and these things get adjusted a little bit. But nonetheless, the, the convenience of the time scale is there. Um, the utility of it is important. And we can even refer to rocks, um, you know, we can sub, subdivide these a little bit. You might talk about rocks that are late Permian in age, meaning they're at the later portion of the Permian time period, or sometimes we talk about the rocks in their stratigraphic position as being upper Permian, okay, so they're further up the stack of Permian rocks. Recognize as well that each one of these time periods does not represent an equal time portion. So for example, the Cretaceous is something like, what is it, like 120 or more million years in length, while uh, the Silurian, I think, is quite short. It's maybe like 20 to 30 million years in length, and you can look up the actual numbers on a time scale anywhere you want to. Um, so there is the geologic time scale in all its glory. Uh, again, if you're in my 101 class, this is something you need to learn and remember because what I'll do is give you a time scale like this, but it'll be partially filled in. Maybe there'll be four names on it, and you'll have to fill in the rest. Uh, and there won't be a word bank, and but the the numbers will be uh, given there. And if you're more of a casual fan of geology, not in a formal course, um, you can do with this as you please. But uh, if you want to become more proficient in geology, if this is something you're interested in, I would recommend learning the geologic time scale um, and committing it to memory for sure. I have one last thing for you here. This is a, and I'll put a link to this on the video description. This is actually the Geological Society of America's official geologic time scale. So this has, you know, starting in the Cenozoic with, you know, zero million years old today, basically, you can see the Quaternary up here, the Neogene, the Paleogene, there's that old term, the Tertiary. Uh, it does give the epoch. So if you wanted the next level of time scale knowledge, you can see the epochs there and even the, like the Pleistocene, the Pliocene, the Eocene, uh, you can see here's the Mesozoic. We've got the number of millions of years on the side here. The black and white striped lines are the magnetic reversals that have occurred on planet Earth as revealed through mainly uh, ocean seafloor uh, cores. And you can see those go back to the Triassic or so. 
Um, and then you can see like these late, middle, early divisions we talked about. These ages here, there's a lot of them. Those are more based on fossil data. I don't cover that. That would be pr probably something for more of an advanced paleontology class. There's a lot of terms there. Here's the Paleozoic, the Permian, and then recognizing both in America and abroad, the Carboniferous or the Pennsylvanian, Mississippian, Devonian, Silurian, Ordovician, Cambrian. And then some of our divisions in the Precambrian. The one again, we don't do this at the one-on-one -on -one level. So I'm just giving you this other time scale. If you want something a little bit more detailed, you can print this out. I've got one sitting right here on my wall. Sometimes I refer to it because I don't remember all the exact numbers. I probably have them broadly in my head, but I don't remember exactly when, let's say, the Devonian began and ended. So sometimes I need to refer to that as a matter for reference. So, so there you have it, friends, the geologic time scale in all its splendor. Hopefully that was helpful to you. What we'll do in our next episodes coming up is look at rock deformation and the way rocks deform through faulting, folding, that sort of thing, how we define rock orientation with things like strike and dip. So until next time, we'll see you uh, here on the channel. Thanks for joining me for this Geology 101 episode. Appreciate your support, and we'll see you next time. Take care.